Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my favorite scotches of 2020. I like using the term favorite rather than top only because, as I've mentioned in other videos, I haven't tried every scotch that came out in 2020 and a lot of these were not introduced in 2020. So I'm picking my favorite scotches that I reviewed in 2020. So you're going to see some older ones on here, you'll see some newer ones as well, but overall this is kind of my way to reflect back on what I thought of what I drank this year, and would I buy it again? You know, kind of why did I place these in the order I did? Ordering whiskeys is is understandably difficult. It's almost like, you know, choosing, choosing a favorite. <laughs> so, very difficult, over and over and over again. Anyway, I did not have any bad scotches this year, so this was a very hard list to put. But I think I've got it broken out kind of into, you know, a couple that I probably wouldn't buy again, the middle of the road, and then the couple that I'm really recommending that you make a point to try. So let's go ahead and start at the bottom of this list. So my least favorite this year, although still good, was the Glenfiddich Fire and Cane. Now this one kind of deserves the place here. It was interesting enough to try. I mean, I've certainly drank about two thirds of this, so it's not like I hated it. I just don't think I would get it again. And it got me excited for the experimental series from Glenfiddich. In fact, I've already bought the IPA. I'll probably buy the Winter Storm and uh, the Project XX. Um, those both, or all three of those, are something that I'm looking forward to reviewing because this exists. So, I guess you could say that that's a good sign from this. But anyway, let's move along. So we've got Springbank 10. Now, please don't boo. <laughs> hear, hear me out. So Springbank is an interesting flavor profile that I do enjoy. But the Springbank 10 doesn't feel done to me. And I see where they're going. I think it's really cool that such a small region of Scotland has such a unique flavor. Because, you know, all the other, uh, aside from maybe Isla or so, all the other regions of Scotland are huge. And thinking about Campbelltown, and they all kind of have a similar pro profile, is very interesting to me. Springbank introduced me to Campbelltown whiskeys, so I'm interested in trying some of the higher proof, or sorry, no, the higher age statement scotches out of Springbank, and I think that will be what makes me love them. So I've certainly got an open mind about Springbank, I just don't think Springbank 10 was it for me. All right, next, Glenfiddich 12. I don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this. This is one that I've recommended to people to try. I usually recommend they try it and then kind of move on from it. It's fine. So I'll just leave it at that. It's, it's fine whiskey. It's just nothing overly exciting. All right, moving along. Kind of same point. The Balvenie 12 Doublewood. This is another scotch that is just fine. Nothing to be terribly excited about. It does have a bit of an interesting flavor profile because of the double wood, but I don't, I genuinely actually kind of don't understand the hype. I think it's, it's approachable and maybe that's why, but if you look at, just hold on a sec. So if you look at this canister, and I realize this might be a little off topic here, but looking at the canister, because we're, we all, you know, there's a saying, you eat with your eyes before you eat with your stomach, right? Or your mouth. This is not something that people would typically pick up, but it does look a little fancy. So maybe if you're just kind of thinking of, a, I, I want to buy a fancy whiskey, and you see this, you'd think, oh, I bet that's something good in there, because they put absolutely no thought into the marketing. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe that's not terribly fair. But either way, the Belvini 12, <clears throat> it's, it's near the middle of the road for me. It's just kind of something I... I really only ever recommend to beginners. All right, lastly on this side of the table, we've got the Old Pulteney 12. Now this is a good tasting whiskey. It's got a little bit of salt to it. It's got a little fruit to it. I actually just had a sip a minute ago. Uh, I'm refilming this because I, I had this switched as far as places go with the next whiskey. I took a sip and then I moved it down the list. The Old Pulteney 12, is no 15, it's no 17, it's no 18. And it's it's not trying to be, I mean, there's multiple years of difference there. But the 12 is not what it used to be, and it's not, it's not what I want it to be. I don't know a better way to put it. But some of these are a little disappointing, I'm realizing as I'm kind of talking this out, and I had some of these thoughts in my head, but saying them out loud kind of makes it 
feel a little bit more like they deserve to be on this side of the table. Now let's kind of move into the, the better, uh, I guess five or six, uh, six. The better six that I have left to go. Now, the next one here is the Lafranc 10. Now this is a whiskey that I feel deserves its place kind of in the higher end of what I've got listed here. Lafroy 10 is interesting in that it is nothing but a smoky whiskey. It's a little disappointing that I want it to be more, but I've had the cast strength version and the cast strength version was fantastic. Oh my goodness, thank you, Eric Waite. I appreciate it, he gave me the bottle. So I really loved the cast strength version, but this Lafroy 10, is also a really good one to have people try. You know, they'll know real fast if they like peated whiskey or not. It's a fun one to drink at a bar. Frankly, it does, uh, you guys are gonna kill me again, there's a couple of really good cocktails that you can make with a whiskey this smoky. So it's it's good. I really do enjoy Laphroaig 10. And there's more peated whiskeys to come on this list. So, speaking of which, Lagavulin 8. <laughs> now the the head-to-head -head that I did very recently of the Ardbeg 10, the Lefroig 10, and the Lagavulin 8 kind of let me realize that I enjoyed Lagavulin more and that even at the eight years old it was a better product in my mind than the 10. So it's good. It makes me really look forward to trying the 16 and I'm looking forward to trying the 16 this year. But I'll get into that at the end of this video. So up next, ah yes, I really enjoy this one. The Classic Lottie from Burke Lottie. This is a really tasty whiskey. It is easy to drink, very approachable. I've recommended this to strangers, you know, I'm sure some of you guys can relate. Don't, don't be a jerk about it, but sometimes if you're in a liquor store and you see somebody with that blank look on their face and you maybe offer up your, your advice, even a little unsolicited, if they appreciate it or if they ask, this is one that I typically will recommend. I think anybody who's looking at scotches could enjoy the classic Lottie. And the color is just awesome. <laughs> I know it's silly. And marketing matters to a degree. It doesn't matter for the taste, but it does move it off the shelf. And it's hard to argue that a bottle and a tin that look like this, I mean, look at my backdrop. <laughs> so, well, I say backdrop, this is an actual wall, so. Uh, a couple people thought it was a green screen recently. All right, anyway, let's move on to the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Now, this was a real big treat for me. This is, a, I guess you'd call this my, my third place. This was a treat for me. I was shocked at how much I enjoyed the Wee Beastie at half the age of the Ardbeg 10. And in fact, when I did the two head to head, I picked the Wee Beastie. I think it's got a really cool barbecue smoke note to it or not even note, like it's identity really to it. And I think it's it's just a great, great introduction from Ardbeg. You could call me an Ardbeg fanboy. I mean, I, I kind of am, but for real, like their stuff is just really good across the board. So uh, Ardbeg Wee Beastie, if you haven't tried it, it's inexpensive and you should, so. Next, this was a surprise as well. The Glen Morangy A Tale of Cake. Now, I found, <laughs> some of you have seen the video, actually a lot of you have seen the video, it's, it's done very well. Um, this whiskey describes itself as a pineapple upside down cake. And I love that description because I feel like it's very accurate. When you taste this, it tastes like a pineapple upside down cake. And I know that because I actually made a pineapple upside down cake along with the video. And it was a really good pairing. <laughs> so this whiskey is up here for the taste, but also because this is kind of my list of favorites, it's up here for the memory. I made it a point, I made the cake, I made the pineapple upside down cake with my kids, and that was a fun memory. And then I ate it, and actually it's funny, nobody else in my family really loved the cake all that much. Um, it tasted fine, they just wasn't their thing. So I ended up eating a whole lot of pineapple upside down cake, and I drank a whole lot of whiskey along with it. So <laughs> that was a good memory for me, and I, I really like this bottle. It's come down in price a little bit, so I think maybe 89-ish or so in, in most areas. I would recommend you guys get this one. It's a fun one to drink. So, and as I said, kind of a unique flavor profile. Now, my whiskey, my scotch whiskey of the year, my favorite one that I reviewed is the Anak 18. Now this one, <laughs> this one is one that I am trying real hard 
not to kill. And I need to, because it's not gonna get better sitting at that low in the bottle. Now, of course, I could go pour it into a smaller bottle and save it for a while. That's not really a thing to do. I like to keep whiskeys on hand for reference, but that little bit of whiskey, that needs to just disappear. And it very well might tonight after filming this. <laughs> but anyway, the Enoch 18 is a sherried scotch, and it is, in my mind, the best sherried scotch that I've had. I'm sure there's better. I'm definitely sure there's better. But it's the best one I have on hand. And I've shared this one a lot, a lot with people, and everybody just loves it. It was a scotch that I was handing around to people, kind of talking about how scotch doesn't have to taste smoky, because a lot of them have that preconception. And it's interesting that a lot of people get that preconception, and I kind of blame Lefroy 10, by the way. Um, I think that a lot of people try Lefroy 10, or they try maybe Johnny Walker Black or something, and they get that smoky note, and then they decide they don't like scotch, and that kills me inside, because, I mean, look at what I have on the table here. Most of these are not peated, or don't have any sort of smoky flavor to them. But back to the sherried scotch. Like, if you think about the amount of scotches and even bourbons and pretty much everything really um, that has been taking taking a lead or the following in the footsteps of sherried scotches this is one that does it really really well I had a great time talking with Nick Taylor about this. Um, I ended up, you know, forking over the, the cash for this before him and I did a live stream. I kind of was emailing back and forth with him. I was like, hey, you know what? This is really expensive. Is this worth it? And he's like, trust me, it's worth it, you know? So I went with this. It was not something I regret, and it's something I'm hesitant to kill off, and that's always a good sign for me. So that is my list of scotches for this year. I believe there's 11 of them here. And let me tell you a little bit kind of what I want to do for this year as far as scotch goes. So I want to, it's hard to tell the backs of these bottles. So the Balvenie 12, I'm disappointed that it's over here so far. But what I want to do is I want to try the 14. And I want to get into that. And I want to explore that flavor profile. Because it's something that I've, I feel like I've tried, but it's not one I've ever owned. And so I really want to get into it and explore what that can be about. Um, I'm going to do the other experimental series from, from Fire uh, Glenfiddich. So I already have the IPA. I have, you know, I'm going to get the Winter Storm. I'm going to get the uh, Project XX. And, you know, if they have any others that are coming out before I film them, then I'll probably get those as well. Um, Ardbeg is fantastic. I've already reviewed pretty much all of them. I would like to explore some of the other... Uh, expressions from Brook Lottie, like the Port Charlotte and the Octomore. That is something I'm super excited to do, uh, as well as some of the other expressions from Glen Morangy. So I've got a good year of scotch drinking ahead of me, and this list is probably going to be even harder to do next year. But anyway, thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Please be sure to check out the description for everything, uh, including the Patreon. There's all kinds of good stuff in there. And if you enjoy the videos I make, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you probably tomorrow, I think, for the best uh, whiskey that I've had this year. It's going to be tough competition. So thank you very much for joining and have a great rest of your day. Cheers.